I've got a haul to share with you guys today and I haven't purchased too much stuff because I'm waiting for the Sephora VIB sale which I believe starts next week. Super excited, have my car all loaded up, <laughs> ready for checkout. I really wanted to get that um, the new Rihanna body bronzing stuff. They come out with a poof with like some glitter and some uh, a cream product and then this cool brush. And the brush sold out already, so I was like, ah, restock before the sale. I'll start off with two new lip liners that I purchased from Charlotte Tilbury. She came out with five more shades of her Lip Cheat uh, lip liner, which is my favorite lip liner. Uh, Pillow Talk and Pink Venus, and now I'm starting to use Iconic Nude. Those are like my most used, most loved um, lip liners. Not only I do I like the colors, but I really like the formula. So I couldn't quite tell online by the swatches that I was able to find how the colors were going to turn out. They all kind of seemed like they were going to be a little bit too dark for my liking. So I bought the shades that I thought were going to be the two lightest out of the new five. And I'm going to go ahead and swatch them next to um, Pillow Talk, Iconic Nude, and then Pink Venus so you guys can see the difference between them. I did swatch all of these colors next to each other. And then when I went to wash the swatches off, I did notice that the two new colors were, they washed off much easier easier than the older ones so I don't know if there's a formula change in it but just based off of that I did notice that so I did have to rub a little bit harder on the older shades to get them off my hand compared to the newer shades so I was like hmm interesting so I have love love trap one of the newer shades on my lips today and it's kind of around five o'clock so I've had this makeup on since about 8 30 this morning I've had it on for quite a while I did notice that it did kind of fade off it didn't fade off like in, a, in an ugly way or anything like that but it did fade off it did fade off a little bit quicker, I feel like, than my older shades. So let me go ahead and swatch Love Trap, which is more of a brownie shade. And I've got this lightly, very lightly around the perimeter of my lips today. So that one is Love Trap. And then I got Super Size Me. And I do like both of these, uh, the tones of both of these. I can make them work. I can just uh, really blend the lipstick into it. Now let me go ahead and swatch Pillow Talk. One of my all-time favorite lip liners ever is the shade Pillow Talk. And then this one is Iconic Nude. It'd probably be the most brown of the bunch. And then here is Pink Venus, which is much more like of a pinky, a warm pinky shade. So you've got Pink Venus, Iconic Nude, Pillow Talk, Super Size Me, and this one was called Love Trap right there. And then a few videos ago, I hauled the uh, Color Riche Shine lipstick in Shining Peach. And I like that so much that when I was in Walmart the other day, I picked up two more shades. So I'm just going to go ahead and swatch them all three together for comparison, even though I already hauled the Shimmering Peach for... I thought it'd be more helpful. <laughs> so this one is Shimmering Peach. They're a little bit more sheer, but they feel so nice on the lips. It's almost like you, you put a gloss on with them. So that one is Shining Peach number 910. And then I got the number uh, 916 Luminous Coral, which is a little bit more uh, orangey. And these don't have that typical L'Oreal lipstick smell, which I really appreciate. There's something about that that just kind of, I don't like the smell of their normal line lipsticks. <laughs> I wish they put like vanilla in them, kind of like MAC lipsticks or something. But And then the third one I got is 912 Dewy Petal, and this is a pretty blue-based baby pink. Um, with the right lip liner, it can look really pretty. Like, I just think of myself like um, six, seven years ago, how much I was searching for a color quite like this. So that one is 912 Dewy Petal. And then Went Wild launched a new collection, and it's called the Goth something or another. <laughs> but I purchased two of the liquid shadows from them because I really liked, um, I had hauled a few videos ago again, um, one of the newer liquid uh, eyeshadows from them. And I really have been enjoying that one. So I thought I would give two more of them a shot. So I purchased the shade Pure Intention, which is a really light kind of vanilla with a, uh, a pink, strong pink shift in it. And then this one, does it have micro glitters in it? Uh, yes, it does have micro glitters in it along with some pretty strong shimmers. And then the other one is called Mystic Dreamer. And this one pulls a little bit more um, pink. But when I, when I swatched them together, I was like, those are actually kind of similar. I use these shadows as toppers. And used as a topper, I think that they're going to kind of show a similar effect. There was another shade that I wanted to get, but it was sold out. And then 
this collection's got the little skulls on the top. But these I think were uh, four, three or four ninety nine, so it's not a bad price. From that same collection, I purchased both of the powder highlighters. So I got purple ashes, which I think is going to be more of a blush or a blush topper on me. This one's got a pretty strong purple to it, and this does have micro glitters in it. It's got a, a quite thick texture to it. You can see right there, it does pull a little bit of a gray. It's like a grayish purple with a, a shift of pink in it. So it's a it's a different type of a, a color for sure. So I'm going to have to play around with it, but it's not like a typical shade. And then the other one is called White Raven, and this one has got a strong uh, pink undertone to it. These have little like skull embossings in them, but you guys know that Blossom Glow is one of my all-time faves um, highlighters of the moment. I've gone through almost an entire pan of that highlighter. These here have got more of a thicker texture. I don't feel like they, they don't feel quite as gelé as Blossom Glow does to me, but they're still pretty nice. So this one has got a stronger pinky shift to it. And then I saw that they launched another shade in like their more permanent ones, and it's called Diamond Lily. I just wasn't sure. I was expecting a silver, but this is a pretty, it's a pretty gray silver. Um, I haven't worn it just yet because I'm like, ooh, I'm not sure how it's gonna, <laughs> I'm not sure how it's gonna come off on my skin, but it's got a really strong gray undertone to it. I, like I said, I was expecting a little bit more of a white silver. So this one right here is called Diamond Lily. So those are from Wet n Wild. They're pretty though. We'll just go ahead and keep it on the highlighter train here because <laughs> it just never stops. <laughs> um, I purchased the Milani Holographic Beams palette in 02 Stellar Lights. I came across this in Walmart and it was on sale for five bucks. I think the original price was like $9.96 or something like that. So I was like, I'm gonna give that a try. These also have a very strong duochrome to them. The formula is quite thick. I did look on the ingredient deck and there is dimethicone. I believe it's like the fourth ingredient in there. So that's going to be that thicker type of texture that, that you feel inside there. Oh. Very blue. The only one that I probably won't get a lot of use out of is the golder shade. Or more bronzy gold. This one here I'll have to have a pretty purple blue eye and I think it would look pretty but so that is the Milani holographic beams number two in stellar lights oh also from wet n wild I purchased uh, one of their new brushes I had purchased a couple when they first launched and I totally spaced out hauling them whoops <laughs> um, but I like those brushes that I purchased from there the handles are really nice um, so I thought I'd go ahead and give this one a try it's the flat contour brush and these are a pretty nice synthetic brush. Uh, this one here I thought would be good to do like really carved out cheeks or something like that. Uh, the handles have kind of a little dent in there to hold it. I kind of usually hold my brush a little bit further back. But uh, they have a nice little weight to them. They're a nice little brush and they're not too expensive. I think this one was like $7.99. So that one is the P50 and it's got a really pretty rose gold to it. Super soft synthetic. MAC also had their Nicki Minaj lipstick collaboration in the goodbyes section, so this lipstick was on sale. And I, I've been meaning to pick up another shade of the Nicki's Nude. I have two of the pink print, which I really love as well, but I wear this Nicki's Nude shade a lot. Like, I wear it a ton. So I purchased another one of those. Let me give you guys a swatch. It's got just a super duper um, wearable peachy nude color, and it's, one of, it's an amplified cream, which is one of my favorite formulas from MAC. I did purchase quite a few products from the new Too Faced Natural collection as well, um, so I thought I'd go ahead and mention that here. Um, I did a video on it, it's the last one that I posted and it'll have swatches and demo and all of that stuff on there too if you're interested. And then I placed an order with Muse Beauty Pro and I purchased, uh, I actually purchased three more. <laughs> <laughs> I purchased three more of the R1 powder foundation from Ket Cosmetics. I have been like super duper obsessed with this new powder foundation. It gives me a little bit of color. I do mix the outer perimeters of my face with the shade R3 and it just it just looks so pretty on the skin. Um, there is shea butter in it so I know some people with drier skin tones are a little 
iffy about it. I have really dry skin and I, about four hours in, I do get a little shiny in the T-zone. I just kind of tap a translucent like uh, powder over the T-zone or the that uh, Too Faced uh, blotter, that little spongy thing. Why can I, I can never remember what it's called. Blotterazzi, <laughs> the Blotterazzi um, does a really good job as well. So if you have dry skin and you want to try a powder foundation, this sits really nicely. Like when I first used it, maybe a, an hour into it, um, it almost looked like a liquid foundation on my skin. Uh, so I did purchase three more of these and I got my mom hooked on it as well. Cat Cosmetics actually sent me their full range and I was about to purchase the two shades um, and then I got that package because I had watched a video where Stephanie Nicole did it with the owner of Cat Cosmetics and I was like, that looks like something that I would like. There's very few ingredients on it. It's really nice on my skin sensitive skin. Um, some people, if you're, if you're prone to breaking out from shea butter, you might be a little bit iffy, um, but my skin has been doing pretty decent so far with it, and I've been wearing it. I've been wearing this foundation every day since I got it, and I think that was about two weeks ago, if, if memory serves me correctly. Uh, the only downfall that I have about it, for me at least, is I've blown through like a whole pan in two weeks. I do use a pretty heavy, co heavy coverage on my skin. I just grabbed my, my R1 and that's what's left of it. <laughs> it's on the tail end, so I'm about to break into another one because I, I purchased three of those shades, and then, I, like I said, I also got my mom hooked on it. She uses R1, and then I got her an R3 sheet to deepen it up a little bit if she wants to. On my drier skin tone, it wears on me for a good eight hours. Um, after eight hours, I do start to get a little bit shiny, and I have to blot my face off. So if you have really oily skin, um, I'm not sure how well it will wear on you. But if you have dry skin and you've been wishing to try a powder foundation, this one is a beautiful one. So I did purchase three more of the R1. I still have plenty of the R3 left. Like I said, I don't use as much of the R3 as I do of the R1. But I thought I would go ahead and swatch all of the shades for you guys because I've been getting uh, questions from you guys about swatching them all. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for you guys. I have a pale, um, a pretty pale fair skin tone with a very pink red undertone to it for reference. So R1, um, I blend it up into like when I put my under eye concealer on, uh, I kind of put it up around here because I already have product under my eyes so I don't need another product on top, if that makes any sense. Um, but that's kind of how I do it. Um, I just pounce it over my face like like so and it, it can either be sheer depending on how much how much you buff it out or it builds really nicely on itself. I can get a really full coverage out of this foundation. So this one here, these do come with a little uh, puff in the lid as well. So this is the R1 and I'm just gonna swatch them all for you guys. This is the best one for my skin tone. So there's R1 and if I buff it in, this one is R3. So I've got this one pretty much through the center of my face and then I mix the two together for the outer perimeter. Um, if I use this by itself, it, I can get pretty dark. It looks pretty though. <laughs> I do like that extra like sun-kissed look. But, so there's R1 and R3. There are only two R shades, which are the red undertones. And then they have the N shade, which is a more neutral undertone. I feel like they pull um, more yellowy than they do kind of neutral. And then they have the O shades, which are more of an olive undertone. So I'm gonna dip into the N shade shades. Here is N2. So there's N2. This one is N3. Then this one is N4. This one kind of came a little bit uh, banged up. So there's N4. This next shade is N5. I did use some of these deeper shades as a bronzer for me and I was able to make them work, but they did pull a little bit too yellow for my liking. I typically like a more red bronzer. So that one is N5. This next one is N6. There are 12 shades altogether. This one is N7. This one is N9. This 
And then the last one in the end is an N11. I'm trying to get a better swatch of this N11 here. So that one is N11. And then the last two shades are in the O family. So I've got O3 and O5, which are the olive undertone. So here is O3. And then the very last one is O5, right here. So let's go through them here. You've, you've got R1, R3, N2, N3, N4, N5, N6, N7, and then it goes to N9 and N11. And then you've got O3 and O5 for the Ket foundations there. And since I'm on a Swatch Fest roll here, <laughs> um, Milk Makeup sent me over their Flex Concealers. Um, there's eight shades in the range right now, and I had purchased the very, the Fair shade. It was called Fair. It was the light, it's the lightest one in their range. When this concealer first launched, I purchased it off of Sephora. And uh, I really liked the formula, but it was too for being the fairest shade, it was too dark for me. So I ended up, I think, giving it to my mom. Um, and that, now that I have a bit, you know, more tan skin tone, um, I've actually really been enjoying using the light shade now that I kind of have it again. It's what I have under my eyes today. It has a medium coverage that's buildable to I think that you could probably get full out of it. Just a swipe underneath my eyes is plenty enough um, for me, but it feels really nice. And what, one of the things that I liked seeing on the little card, which I really didn't pay attention to before that I, when I had purchased purchase it originally was it says it's formulated with blue lotus to moisturize it and chamomile to calm the skin which is great because I have sensitive dry skin <laughs> so it does look like I said I've had this concealer on geez for eight from whatever eight o'clock in the morning till five it's like 5 30 now <laughs> um and it still looks really good I set it with the RMS or, or not RMS I always want to say RMS RCMA no color powder it looks great um so I'm going to go ahead and swatch they sent me the eight shades in the range and the reason I believe they sent out the package was because they're uh adding to the shade range which I was excited to hear about so there are eight more shades coming according to this little card here there are two uh, more that are coming that are deeper than what they have in the range and there are two more that are lighter than what they have in the range so I do plan on from the little swatch here it looks like this one's got a pinker undertone so I probably will be picking up the it's called 1Y01 and it says fall of 2018 so these are gonna come out in the fall it seems to be but there are also four shades in the in, in the inner spectrum of the range too let me see let me let me let me see if you can see right there it's the newer shades. So now that I wear kind of a deeper foundation shade, this color actually works out pretty good for me. I will be purchasing the lightest shade when it does come out though, because I like this formula. I think it's really nice. Um, and I like that uh, moisturizing and calming aspect to uh, sensitive dry skin that I have. <laughs> so this is the shade that I have on and it's currently called the Fair Shade right here. And it comes with a doe foot applicator and a little squeezy type tube. So this is Fair. That's the shade that I have on right now. And then this shade is light. Followed by light medium. Oh, this one here, I ha this happened to the fair one when I first pulled it out too. There's a little stopper. The little stopper was not stopping. The concealer was actually coming out in the cap. So let me see if I can squeeze it really hard if I get it to stick back in there. That's not good. Okay, there it went. It's stuck in there now. So this one is light medium. And then this shade is medium. This next shade is medium tan. And then this shade is tan, just called tan. And then there is warm deep. And then the eighth shade that they currently have in the range is the shade Deep. Right there. So those are the eight shades of Flex Concealer from Milk. And they will be adding eight shades to this range. Two lighter, two darker, and four in the middle, which I'm, I'm pretty excited about.
And then so far I've only purchased one item from the Tom Ford Summer Collection, which is usually I buy quite a few products. <laughs> so I purchased the Sheer Cheek Duo in number four Exotic Flora. And this is super pretty. This is what I have on my cheeks today is blush. This is that extra dimension-ish uh, baked jelly type formula. The one that came out before 04 was the exact same color as one that was launched last summer and I actually ended up returning it. It was violet something I think it was called but I was like this ain't violet at all. <laughs> but this one, okay this is number four exotic flora. Again I have this on my cheeks. I mix the two shades together. I really like the formula of these. I feel like they can go from sheer to really intense just depending. They build and they sheer out very easily depending on your liking. So I do really like this formula from Tom Ford. I was just annoyed that one time um, when I had purchased one of the newer shades it was just like a actually it was actually a renamed shade of the other one. They looked exactly alike. If you guys can remember when I hauled it. This is the shades mixed together. So that's pretty much what I have on my cheeks today. So that is number four exotic flora from Tom Ford. And then also in Walmart, I noticed that Hard Candy had had a new uh, Fox in a Box. They had these long a long time ago, and then they discontinued them, and it looks like they brought them back. So I purchased one of the Fox in a Box shades, and this is the Girl Next Door. It's called a Marbleized Baked Blush, and it does come with a little Hard Candy brush never use. Um, but then when I got it home, I was like, this shade actually looks really familiar. And it's like the same shade that comes in their blush that's their round baked formula. Um, I like the blush color, so I'm not like totally mad at it. I think this was like $7 or something. Um, but that is something to mention. It's got a lot of like shimmer to it, and it's a very cool tone pink color. Let me grab the other shade too. So here's the shade in number 125, Living Doll, that comes in this packaging. So they're pretty much the same type of product. So let me give you a swatch of it right there next to this. So I kind of feel like they just kind of re repackaged it. <laughs> and then when I purchased some more of the cat foundations, I did grab another one of the Lemonhead LA uh, Space Pastes and I got the shade Adult Film. I just think that these are really fun. These are like really large chunks of glitter in a paste that they're really easy to use. I do get fallout with them throughout the day. Not as bad as some glitters, but uh, that is something to make note of. I just feel like because they're in like that paste form that they're so easy to tap over shadows and stuff like that. So this one it kind of looks white but it's got a lot of holographic duochrome to it. So this is the shade Adult Film. And I like to use these as toppers. So I think this one here with like the iridescence in it I think would look really pretty over like one of those blue purple eyeshadows or either like a duochrome white that shifts really strong to a purple or blue. I think it would look great. These are they're just fun products, these um, Lemonhead shades. I kind of want to get a couple more. And then one of the times when I was in Ulta, I was just browsing through the aisles, as one does, <laughs> and I came across the Pure Cosmetics aisle, and I seen that they had some new palettes. So I started swatching the shades, and some of them were so intense and pretty looking that I was like, I want all three of these palettes. There was a blush palette and two two eyeshadow palettes, one has some face products in there. And I was like, man, if I get all three, it's gonna cost this much, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, wait a minute, I think that the Pure Cosmetics is always running a sale. <laughs> so I went to the Pure Cosmetics website while I was in the Ulta store, and it was 25% off the website. So I purchased the three palettes that I wanted off of the Pure Cosmetics website, and I think I got out of the tax and I got 25% off. So I purchased three of them. I'm wearing uh, one of the palettes on my eyes today. It's the 12-piece Magnetic Eyeshadow Palette, which is another thing. Pure's new palettes that I'm going to show you are magnetic. All of the pans come out and you can pop them into like a magnetic eyeshadow palette or configure your own. Something that I think is, is very clever. I, I love it when brands do that with their eyeshadows. So each shade in here is 0 0.07 ounces uh, per shade, which you're getting quite a bit of product. So this is the one that I have on my eyes today. I did end up using Burberry's Trench underneath the brow and again I've had this makeup on for quite a while now. <laughs> I keep saying that but um, I've had this on for a while. So you've got some really pretty metallic eyeshadows in here. Um, the only thing with the metallic shades is I don't feel like they pick up that great on a brush. They go on much better with your finger. The formula of these feels very very similar to the Tarte uh, these are the chrome paint shadow pots. These little guys right here, 
The, the formula of this feels very similar to the formula of the metallic shades in these uh, shadow palettes that I'm going to show you. So this palette's got four mattes in there. You've got these two right here and these two right here. It doesn't have a matte that was light enough for underneath the brow for what I wanted to use today, so that's why I brought in the Burberry. But um, the mattes in here, too, are really nice. They're super soft. They're pigmented. They blend really well. I was really impressed with this because the last palette that I bought from Pure Cosmetics was the, um, was it the My Little Pony one, and I was just like... They were hard and dry. They weren't the nicest eyeshadows, and so I was kind of turned off from that palette. But then when I swatched these in store, I was like, these, these feel really nice. So when I was finally able to use the palettes, I was pleasantly surprised that the shadows work really nice. Again, the only thing is these really shiny shades. They don't pick up that great with a brush. But they're very intense metallics. And I have um, this palette on my eyes today the top row and this middle row very nice and then the last row So that is the 12 piece magnetic eyeshadow palette. It's actually called the Pure Visionary eyeshadow palette. And then I purchased the blush palette. It's the four shade magnetic blush palette, four in one blush book. These things are massive. There's each blush in here is 0.30 ounces, which is a giant, there's a lot of product in here. Again, these pans are removable, which I really like. These kind of have a satin finish. This one here is the kind of a really metallic-y shade. I think it'd be really pretty as an eyeshadow. Um, but these are the four shades here. Um, so you could use them, um, you know, you could put concentrate your brush in one portion or the other to get different tone out of them. I'm just going to run it straight through. These are very, very pigmented blushes. Um, so you do want to go in with a light hand and build, which depending on your preference, you may or may not like. Sometimes I feel like super saturated blush shades are a little bit more difficult to use than something that is buildable because these are really intense but I do think the shades are really pretty and then the other palette is called the Peer Creator palette this has got a different type of packaging to it I'm trying to see the uh, how much products in here the shadows are 0 0.07 ounces and then there's a bronzer and a highlighter in here and th those are 0 0.13 ounces so again you're getting a pretty decent amount of product this palette here it, the top pops out like that and then the lid, oh, there goes with the screen, the lid comes out so you can set this on your desk and then the mirror will lean up so you could use it as a like uh, mirror on your vanity or if you travel or something like that. It comes in handy. These again are removable which I really like. This actually has a foam insert that comes out so you can um, take shades like from those other palettes and pop, you can turn this into its own magnetic eyeshadow palette because the thing that separates the shadows also comes out of this palette. It's a it's a neat idea and I, and I like it. <laughs> um, the metallics in here are the same type of formula as the one in that other eyeshadow palette I showed you. They do go on better with your finger. Um, the, a brush, it just, it's harder for me to pick up the, those type of eyeshadows on a brush. I get much more saturated color when I use my finger. So the top row is all matte. Use some swatches. And again, um, the mattes have been blending out really nice for me. That's the top row and the center. Yeah, you can definitely tell there's some silicone, probably dimethicone in those shadows, those really shiny ones. And these last shadows. Those uh, tart chrome pots are probably the closest thing I can think of that really remind me of the formula of these metallics. And then I'll swatch the highlighter and the bronzer, which I haven't used the highlighter or the bronzer yet. But the bronzy or the bronzer type shade actually looks more like a, a pretty cool contour. 
So those are them too. Those are some pretty cool palettes from Pier. It definitely pays to shop around. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Thank you for watching. Do not forget to wear sunscreen and I'll see you guys later. Bye.